Rod, thanks again for your time today. Uh, I just want to get right into it. Big change. One of the things I love most about Star Trek, having been a lifelong fan, is and I think one of the most powerful aspects of the whole series is just how much it means, uh, you know, the series, the stories, the characters, how much it means to so many different people uh, and the different things it can mean to those people. Um, for you, I'm curious what Star Trek means to you beyond the prof your professional work on it, beyond it obviously being a huge part of your family's life. Um, what is Star Trek to you? What does it mean to you? Uh, I, no, I really appreciate that question. Thank you. I, and I think it's, you know, it's a little different for me. Um, uh, you know, I, I didn't get Star Trek at a young age. I watched my Knight Rider and my Starsky and Hutch and those sorts of shows. Um, you know, I really didn't understand it till pretty much after my father passed away and, and fans would start coming up to me and saying how Star Trek touched their lives and inspired mm -hmm. them. And, and uh, whether they were an abusive relationship or perhaps a severe disability or, or, or some sort of uh, a situation that that where they felt limited in in their upbringing or life, Star Trek gave them hope for the future, and in many cases they would end their stories to me to me with a I'm now a doctor or I'm a teacher and all this and and I owe it to Star Trek. And back then I was just like, wait a second, a Knight Rider never did this to me. I don't how did where did this come from? Um, I'm very proud of it. You know, I'm very proud of my father. I'm, I'm proud of the ideology philosophy in Star Trek uh, more than the show. And it, it's, I'm not, not proud of the show, but what, my, what gave me my direction, my goal, my passion in life was to, even if I'm not going to be uh, the next Star Trek creator, whatever I do, whether it is Star Trek, entertainment, uh, our family foundation, you name it, I, I want to continue those ideals and philosophies. And you, you brought up Idik. Idik is the backbone of Star Trek. It's the true appreciation, thirst, and craving for all things that are unique and different on our planet. And, and we've, we've needed that for, well, a millennia, and we still need that philosophy today. Yeah, I, I was just going to say, I think we do especially need that philosophy today. Uh, the thing yeah. that always struck me about Star Trek is, you know, it's this uh, incredible future, this utopian vision in a lot of ways, obviously has, you know, its dark sides as well. But the fact that humanity sort of has to go through some very bad things to get there. And it, it can't help but feel these days that we're a little bit in that. So, you know, thinking about the 55th anniversary of the original series, thinking about your father's centenary, um, you know, what do you think the future holds for the franchise? And, and what, what do you think your parents would make of sort of where Star Trek is at right now? Well, I'll, let me answer both of those. And I, I, I might get lost in the first one first. Sorry. My, my father did this awesome thing and it's always humorous. Um, he didn't go to a lot of conventions, but when he did, he'd, he'd go there. And of course he'd go up on stage. And, and one of the first things that I heard he did once is he'd go up, he'd fold his arms, he'd scan the room. And of course this was in the, uh, the, the late eighties. And he'd look back and forth and smirk and say, yep, just the way I planned it. Which, <laughs> that was his way of saying, how the hell did this happen? Uh, but he was always so proud and appreciative to the fans because they're the ones that kept Star Trek on the air. They're the ones who also believed in that better future. It was the college kids during Vietnam who really kept Star Trek on the air and got it going into syndication. Um, so so I, I, I think he'd be incredibly proud. And in fact, there's an interview that he did with someone way back where he, he says, I hope some talented young writer producer comes along and takes Star Trek and takes these characters and really does something better with them. And the fans say, boy, that's even better than what Roddenberry did. I mean, he actually said that. So he, he wanted Star Trek to live on. And to be honest, like we have both said to each other, the messages were extremely relevant in the 60s, just as relevant today. Um, I think, I hope one day they are not relevant, but I think we're going to need Star Trek for decades and centuries to come. Um, and I hope we are learning and evolving as a species along the way. Here's hoping. Uh, well, I think we only have like a minute, a minute left. So I just want to do a quick lightning round with you. Uh, sure. and this, might, this might be like asking someone to name their favorite child, but I have to know uh, what's your favorite ship from Star Trek? Uh, it, it's hard. I, I'm, 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 I'm a next generation. So, you know, the Enterprise D uh, is, is definitely a favorite of mine. Yes. Favorite captain? Uh, okay, good. I'm so glad you asked this. Um, I used to always say Picard, uh, but Anson Mount, the way he came on the bridge of the Discovery in that, in that first episode, 
the way he portrayed himself as a leader, as a captain, by being humble and showing his flaws and saying, I cannot do this without you as my team. That is a true captain. So, so I, I'm going to move uh, uh, Pike, as Anson Mount as Pike, up probably to my number one captain. And then Saru has done a phenomenal job as being an empathetic, compassionate captain as well. So, but sorry, Pike, I know these are lightning rounds. I'm sorry, I'm going up. <laughs> Can't wait for Strange New Worlds. Uh, favorite doctor? Uh, I, I would say my mom, just because, you know, she's my mom. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. Um, uh, but, I mean, DeForest Kelly, it, it just DeForest Kelly. And uh, your favorite Star Trek villain? Damn good, damn good questions. This, you're, this is not going to be good. Uh, the Horta. The Horta was devil in the dark. It wasn't a villain. I mean, for a spoiler alert, it was a mother protecting its young. But that was my first experience watching Star Trek and seeing a character who we thought was this bad, evil monster that turns out to be a mother protecting its young. And that was the first time I knew that a television show could flip it around on you and say, who's the devil in the dark now? It's the mm -hmm. humans trying to kill the mother. So, so. That's Star, that's Star Trek in a nutshell. That's, that that's is Star Trek exactly in a nutshell, 100%. That's exactly yeah. it. Okay, well, I, I think we're out of time, Rod, but thank you for so much for your time. Looking so much forward to Strange New Worlds. Uh, I really hope there's a Deep Space Nine remaster somewhere in the mix there in the future. Looking forward to some of the announcements on, on uh, Star Trek Day, uh, but appreciate your time today. Appreciate it. Live long and prosper, man.